Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. First Flight Airbus's Blade Laminar Flow Wing Demonstrator. Driverless Hover Taxi makes first concept flight in Dubai. Commercial airline service resumes in San Juan. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson at September 28th and this is Airborne Unlimited. Airbus's A340 Laminar Flow Blade Test Demonstrator aircraft and A340-300 has made a successful maiden flight for the Clean Sky Blade project. The aircraft dub Flight Lab took off from the Tarb Aerodrome in southern France at local time 11. And after a series of successful tests, it landed at Airbus's facilities in toulouse blagnac The overall flight time was 3 hours and 38 minutes. BLADE stands for Breakthrough Laminar Aircraft Demonstrator in Europe. It aims to improve aviation's ecological footprint, bringing with it a 50% reduction of wing friction and up to 5% lower CO2 emission. Airbus's A340 Flight Lab is the first test aircraft in the world to combine a transonic laminar wing profile with a true internal primary structure. On the outside, the aircraft is fitted with two representative transonic laminar outer wings, while inside the cabin, a highly complex specialist flight test instrumentation station has been installed. The extensive modifications to the A340-300 testbed aircraft took place during the course of a 16-month working party in Tarb. Dubai edging closer to its goal of launching a pioneering hover taxi service, with authorities announcing a successful concept flight made last week without passengers. The maiden concept flight of the autonomous air taxi involves a vehicle that will be used for the world's first self-flying taxi service, set to be introduced by Dubai's Road and Transport Authority. The two-seater AAT, capable of transporting people without human intervention or a pilot, has been supplied by Volocopter, a Germany-based specialist manufacturer of autonomous air vehicles. Powered by electricity and featuring low noise levels, the AAT is an environmentally friendly vehicle. Its current prototype version has a maximum flight time of approximately 30 minutes, at a cruise speed of 31 miles per hour, and a maximum airspeed of just over 60 miles per hour. The AAT measures about 2 meters in height, and the diameter of the rotor rim, including propellers, is just over 7 meters. Over the next five years, the RTA will collaborate with the UAE General Civil Aviation Authority and the Dubai Civil Aviation Authority to ensure that the operational requirements for implementing AAT services are put in place. After the break, A10 demonstration team to perform during 2018 airshow season. Progressive Aerodyne's C-Ray Elite offers turbocharged Rotax Power and Garmin G3X Touch Avionics. Incredibly well equipped, you can fly away in this best in category Amphib for less than $160,000. Visit CRA.com for more details. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. FAA hurricane recovery efforts are now supporting an increasing number of commercial flights per day at Luis Munoz Marin International Airport in San Juan, Puerto Rico. As the agency continues to restore radars, navigational aids, and other equipment damage during Hurricane Maria, the number of commercial flights will increase. The agency has implemented a slot reservation system to manage the demand for ramp space at the airport and to safely separate aircraft in the air. The FAA also airlifted a mobile control tower back to St. Thomas to support the relief and recovery missions there. The tower at Cyril E. King International Airport on St. Thomas was initially damaged by Hurricane Irma. Though the FAA removed the tower to the mainland in advance of Hurricane Maria to protect it during the storm. 
Preliminary FAA damage assessments have identified a number of critical radars and navigation aids that were destroyed or disabled during the storm. The FAA is bringing replacement systems to the islands by air and by sea to restore essential radar, navigation, and communication services, and technicians are working on many of those systems now. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update, highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. The Aircraft Electronics Association, known as the AEA, is part of our Airborne Partnership Initiative team, and their presence is felt in all areas of aviation. As avionics continues to become an important and indispensable subcomponent of modern aircraft, proper representation of the avionics industries becomes critically important. That's where the AEA fits into the picture. Founded in 1957, the Aircraft Electronics Association represents nearly 1,300 member companies in 43 countries. The AEA membership includes repair shops, manufacturers of avionics equipment, instrument repair facilities, instrument manufacturers, airframe manufacturers, test equipment manufacturers, major distributors, engineers, and educational institutions. In partnering with AEA, ANN took the initiative to produce a live televised program we call the New Product Introduction. In this program, we interviewed the various vendors that were participating in AEA's annual convention. It was the success of this program that led to our follow-on innovation at Oshkosh several years ago, which became the Airborne Innovation Preview. After these messages, AUVSI Novus Unmanned to bring together startups and investors. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. AUVSI has announced plans for Novus Unmanned, a conference that will bring together premier innovators and investors from the world of autonomous and unmanned technology and systems for funding opportunities, mentorship, and a chance to make powerful and lasting connections. The Venture Acceleration Program of InvestorFest is partnering with AUVSI to host the event, which will be held at the Hyatt Regency San Francisco Airport on November 1st. The FAA has published an SAIB regarding an airworthiness concern with the display of intruder aircraft vertical trend indications on Avidyne TAS-600A, TAS-600, and 9900BX traffic advisory systems. Avidyne has identified a defect in TAS units that may prevent the TAS from updating intruder aircraft vertical trend when rapidly changing on-ship altitude updates are received. This problem is particularly pronounced when the TAS receives on-ship altitude updates from an air rink 429 altitude source providing one-foot resolution. Raysback Engineering has received an STC from the FAA for Hartzell Propeller's newest structural composite sweat blade props designed specifically for Beechcraft King Air 350 turboprops. Hartzell designed and manufactures the King Air 350 propellers and will install in the aftermarket across its dealer network. Boeing and Turkish Airlines have announced the airline's intention to order 47879 Dreamliners. The order will be reflected on the Boeing orders and deliveries websites once finalized. The 787 Dreamliner is the most technologically advanced airplane in the world, said M. A. Olger Akel, chairman of the board and the executive committee of Turkish Airlines. 
Vice President Pence offered his thanks Monday to employees working at NASA's human spaceflight programs during a tour of the agency's Marshall Space Flight Center. The vice president saw the progress being made on NASA's space launch system that will send astronauts on missions around the moon and ultimately to Mars. He also visited Marshall's Payload Operations Integration Center, where the agency manages all research aboard the ISS. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The U.S. Air Force A-10 demonstration team will once again display the capabilities of the Thunderbolt II, affectionately known as the Warthog, at approximately 14 shows throughout the 2018 air show season. The A-10 demonstration team last flew in 2011. The A-10 flew exclusively with the Air Force Heritage Flight Program in 2012 and 2017. Specifically designed for close air support, the Thunderbolt II's combination of high and low speed maneuverability, long loiter time, and accurate weapons delivery has proven an important asset in Air Force operations throughout history. The single ship aerial demonstration team is sponsored by Air Combat Command and assigned to Davis Monthan Air Force Base, Arizona. The team pilot is Captain Cody Wilton. The team's schedule is currently being built. Airshow coordinators interested in booking the A-10 demonstration team should send requests to acc.a3ta at us.af.mil. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins from important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.